Have you been looking for one lens to do it all? Well, almost. Well, I'm taking a look at the Sony 18-135 for APS-C, and it might actually just fit that bill. Stay tuned to find out. If you don't know me already, I go by that one camera guy. I do tutorials, guides, and reviews on Sony mirrorless equipment and gear. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the latest content. And while you're at it, don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoy the content I'm producing and you want to see more in the future. It always helps out. So I had the very fortunate opportunity to go ahead and test out the Sony 18-135 while I was at Universal Studios. In addition to that, I also did some testing in the backyard just to check for some video autofocusing and some sharpness tests and so forth. I did a, a rental from Sony Pro Support. So uh, if you're part of Pro Support program, you can just go ahead and request and try out different lenses. And so I went ahead and took a look at this. Now, this isn't the first time I've actually taken a look at this one. The first time was actually some months ago, um, but I didn't get to do a full test with it. But now I have, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. So I'm gonna cover the construction, talk about the photography aspects of the lens, the video aspects of the lens, and who I think it's for. So that's gonna be sort of the talking uh, points about it. So this is gonna be a quick summary of what I think about the lens so you don't have to watch the whole video. One, the build size, uh, the build, the size, and the zoom range is excellent. I found the sharpness also to be very good, video autofocus to be very good. I would highly recommend this lens. Unfortunately, for the price, Definitely make sure you're getting it for at least $499 US and lower. I think if this lens was at $399, it would be perfect. Sony did a really good job uh, with this lens, although I was very highly critical of it when it first came out, but it was more of an issue of price. Now let's go ahead and jump into this. So what is the interest of this lens in the first place? Well, I get this question a lot and it's a very tough one to answer. People always say in the comments, hey, that one camera guy, can you recommend one lens if I can only get one? There, Sadly, there is none. There is none. And unfortunately, I'm just going to say now I haven't been able to test out the 18 to 200. That will be a lens I will look at in the future. That There's an APS-C version of that. But the truth of the matter is there really is no one lens. So, for example, if you were going to get the 18 to 135, if you shoot with the A6000 or Alpha 6300, I would pair it up with the Sony 35 f 1.8 because it has stabilization okay combine these two and you've got most of your travel concerns and low light concerns handled with this particular kit combination if you have the alpha 6500 for example i'd recommend taking a look at the sigma 30 f 1.4 this is a very solid lens and obviously doesn't have stabilization but your 6500 does if you do own that all right so this lens does sit neck and neck with um I guess this one here, it's the 18 to 105 f4. We'll talk a little bit about that in this video today, which is really good to know. Um, another point to mention just right away, low light's gonna suck on the 18 to 135. I hope that's not a surprise to anyone. Your starting aperture's at f3.5 at 18 millimeters. Once you're at about 50 millimeters and over, your lens will drop down to about f5.6. So you're losing a lot of light very quick. So you definitely wanna add a prime lens again. You can't have one lens to do it all. It's just not gonna happen. Unless one day all these cameras had A7S low light capabilities, and even then it's still not enough. Um, and I still think this this combination is a better choice than just your cell phone. So uh, a lot of folks might just use their, uh, their phone just to do their photos and everything. I think that this kit little combination here, paired with an A6000 or Alpha 6300 is a solid choice if you need some reach. Now, when this lens was first announced, I was very critical of it. And it had to do with the fact that a lot of users, especially in the Sony camp, have been waiting for a uh, faster, maybe zoom uh, lens or uh, even a nice prime lens from Sony, which unfortunately didn't come out. And we ended up with this, which was the 18-135, to which retailed for $599. And when it first was announced, I was critical of it. I said the price was wrong. Um, and it wasn't the lens people were looking for. But, you know, talking about it, seeing the specifications and then actually using it are two completely different stories. So having had the chance to take a look at it personally, those feelings have changed a bit, but because of the price. So construction, so let's cover that now. Has a metal mount. Uh, let's see here, plastic feels very solid. It doesn't feel cheap 
at all. I, I actually really do like the feel and handling and the size of this lens. And when you see it paired with like the A6000 or 6300 body, it looks really good. It's a um, form factor size, very handy and light. So if you're traveling with it and doing a lot of daytime stuff, very, very solid choice. It does include an autofocus, manual focus switch on the side. There is no uh, focus hold button, so you can't do additional features. I don't think it's a miss point on it. It's still uh, it's not a downside to it. Uh, for those of you wondering, the filtered thread size is 55 uh, millimeters, which I think are kind of odd size, I would assume. But uh, the 28 to 70 kit lens for the full frame is also the same size as well. Uh, like I said, again, already so all compact. Just know your aperture, your aperture range is from f3.5 to 5.6 and it falls to 5.6 very quickly after about 50 millimeters. Again, uh, points that I wanna stress again, travel friendly, and the zoom range on full frame is about 27 millimeters to 202 millimeters. So it covers that uh, 35 millimeter version of 24 to 200 millimeter range. So you're getting a very wide range in just this lens. And I've been very, uh, you know, I enjoyed the Canon version of this lens, the 18 to 135, very solid. And I'll tell you right now, as, as far as my summary that I said earlier, it's it's on there, it's, it's a solid lens. As far as the images that you are seeing, I just wanna stress that I did shoot both RAW and in JPEG while I was at Universal Studios. I shot in RAW for the most part when I knew the subjects, I didn't require a burst. And then uh, I shot in JPEG when I was trying to shoot a lot of images in a given time because I was using the A6000 and as you know, the A6000 has a really small buffer, okay? Uh, I did do some editing with the images. No, I didn't really add anything specific other than pull up the exposure or highlights and shadows. Although the JPEG images are gonna kind of be baked in, so there was some processing done to those. So let's go over the photography aspects of this because you're probably very interested in them. I really like the range, the 18 to 135. You can get a really nice wide shot of an, a, a location, as you can see in some examples, and then boom, right up close to the subjects. I uh, there were scenes where I sh would shoot wide, for example, like in the Simpsons location, right? That Simpsons area in Universal Studios, and boom, zoomed right into the actual family. And that's what you can do with an 18 to 135. There was even this shot of like, I think it was like Westminster Street or whatever, shot a wide shot, and then boom, locked into the building. So there's a lot, it, it may not seem like a lot, but the reach is pretty darn good um, for what you're going to get out of that lens. Autofocus was very good, quick in good lighting all right and obviously lighting when lighting is very little to nothing right so when we went into the uh i think the walking dead uh sort of attraction very low light autofocus struggled but that's kind of a normal thing and what i ended up doing funny enough was when i was taking photos i totally forgot i had a flash on the a6000 and so uh, i was like oh yeah i have a flash so i used that for a couple of pictures but don't forget your sony uh, apc cameras do you have a flash and I recommend bouncing it up. That's kind of the strategy I would recommend there. But I did really like that. Focus is quick. I can recompose a shot in an instant. Sorry about that. I'm at 18 millimeters, 35, 50, 135. You name it, you're gonna be flexible with this lens. The thing is like when I'm out at these places shooting, I did find myself shooting between 100 to 135 millimeters. You can get some really nice compression and subject isolation at those ranges. Yes, it's gonna be at 5.6 at that point, but even at 135, you can still get some nice isolation on your subject and some shallow depth of field, right? You can still get some of that separation there. And I've said that word too much already. So um, very, very good. The minimum focusing distance, uh, I don't know, I would say it's adequate. It's not like you can bring an object up close to this close at 18 millimeters, like you could probably with the prime lens with some of your ultra wide options, but it's it's decent um, as far as how close you can get to your subject. Maybe I think it's like a foot, maybe a foot and a half or something like that. I'm sure you can check that out. All right, so that's the photo side of things. We'll get more into, oh, well, while we're at it, I did do a sharpness test with the lens. I would say across the range, I was very, very impressed, wide open. Well. When we say wide open, I mean the maximum aperture at that particular range. So, for example, when I shot with the 18 millimeter range, uh, it was fairly sharp across the board. Obviously, the corners are going to be a bit soft at 18 millimeters. It is a zoom lens we're expecting here. But I'd say it would, even within the peripheral range, it was still fairly sharp. Very, very happy with it. You stop down, it gets a little bit better. But I felt from center to peripheral, 
it was pretty good. Corner, uh, it's going to be soft. Then when you go to like the 35 millimeters, it improves even more. Central sharpness good, peripheral sharpness good. You stop down maybe like 5.6 and even by F8, corners are starting to look pretty good. And then I think once I was like at 70, I did a test at 70 millimeters or so. It was very sharp corner to corner at I think f4 point or like at f5.6 it looked really good across the range and 135 was almost the same as well I think and I'm not sure on my test but it seemed as though the 70 or like around that range looked a little bit better than the 135 but I could be wrong I think at 135 it still looked really good and the, like I said it's it's really nice the the optical quality you're getting out of that lens uh, well out of this lens video is very important a lot of folks are all about video nowadays and and you want a lens that's gonna work. Video autofocus, very quick, very snappy. You're gonna be very happy. I might even cut to a video. All right, everybody. Uh, right now, I'm testing out the Sony 18-135 optical steady shot lens. I'm at 24 millimeters, a 50th of a second f4 ISO 1250. And what I'm gonna be doing is testing out the autofocus performance. I have it set to autofocus wide, uh, face tracking, and so forth. So this way you can sort of see the performance. I am 50 millimeters. I'm gonna dodge a wheel out of the frame and into the frame and see how well it does. Frame and then back. So lighting is a little bit lower now. Um, dodging and weaving again, I'm off screen. Back on screen, you can see the face tracking pick up. So no problems there. And again, I get a little bit closer. Focus hits, back out. It's tracking my face. Awesome job. It's exactly what you're going to expect out of a native lens built from Sony. Uh, you're going to be very, very, very happy with that. So one thing that uh, I'll talk about it now, there's always a lot of discussion between the 18105 f4 and the 18 to 135. This was debated, I think, to some degree because people are saying, well, forget the 18 to 135, get the 18 to 105 f4 instead. Yes, you're going to get less range, but you're going to get an f4 lens, constant aperture. And I think in many ways for video, good choice. It is, uh, I think it's solid. You get a power zoom, which isn't too bad. Granted, you're not going to get the same kind of speeds you would get from like a, a dedicated handy cam or video camera uh, with like some sort of servo zoom, but the power zoom isn't bad. It's quick uh, to, to a degree. I, I wouldn't say it's like the slowest thing on earth. It's good, it's good. But sometimes I, I feel, okay, this is just my personal preference. I like to just be able to just boom, be at 135 millimeters and then quickly be at 18 millimeters. So where it would probably take maybe two and a half, maybe three seconds to go from 18 to 105, I'm already at 135 in less than a second. So those things are important to me, especially in kind of sporting scenarios or fast moving subjects. I kind of want to be able to get to one point to another. When you got a, a zoom like this, it's still quick, but you're going to have to kind of ride that zoom there. And there is a benefit to that, especially if you need it for video. So, but if you care more about jumping quickly to an action event and you want to get to it, especially if you're traveling or something like that, I choose this. And one other thing cosmetically and in terms of just build size, you have to look at the form factor. This lens is still very much smaller and more compact. This lens gets a little bit bigger and more front heavy on your camera body. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these two. If I had to pick, to be completely honest with you, if I was gonna take a camera, travel, go somewhere, I would choose this one. This is the one I would go with, okay? So let's go ahead and just summarize everything and do a conclusion. Who is this lens for? Folks who are traveling and they want a better lens in their 16 to 50 kit lens. That's what I would recommend. I would not say that this is for your advanced enthusiasts, maybe uh, semi-professionals or something in that regards. This is more of that, that one lens that you wanna take out for travel and general photography. You're gonna really love this lens. If you like the Canon 18 to 135, for example, you're gonna feel right at home with this particular lens on the Sony mirrorless system. Now, we're gonna have some debates here, and that's where in the comment section I do wanna know what your thoughts are. Would you get this at the price of $499? Let's say you only had the 16 to 50 kit lens. If this was $399, I would be recommending this left and right to everybody. Because it's $499 right now, $599 retail, it changes the story. That's where things kind of get a little bit dicey. I can't just easily recommend it. If you have the cash and you do sort of travel and you want that one lens, 
paired up with a prime lens, obviously, this is a solid choice. You're going to be very, very happy, okay? Again, not for the advanced enthusiasts, not for the people who are you like, you know all your stuff, but if you're just generally shooting, this is great. I, I gotta, I gotta eat my words. You know, I, 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 I'm just telling it like it is. So, but I'm curious in the comments below, would you pick up the lens? At what price point would you even consider it? Uh, but that's my final thoughts on this lens, folks. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Check out my other content. Hit that bell notification and smash that like button if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more stuff on APSC because you know what? APSC is apparently not dead. <laughs> And that's going to do it for me, guys. I'll catch you later. Peace. I left my heart in California. I let it go deep into the blue. I could be happy in California. I would